Amen, 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 amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God for everything. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the true living God. You know, I feel um, not too pleased when somebody said Jesus is not the Son of the true living God or Jesus is not the Son of God. And yeah, you can say that, but um, Jesus is the Son of the true living God. And Jesus is the Son of God, and Jesus is our Redeemer. Jesus is our Lord. If He have paid the price for us, and how He was born, so it really shows us that Jesus is that is the Son of the True Living God. And it's not like us that we born by flesh to flesh. Um, all the glory belongs to God. Yeah, other people they don't believe that He's the Son of God. Other people they believe that he is. Other people they don't, and they um they think of different things, which is fine for whatever you 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 you, you think of. That's okay. That's what we believe. You know, I used to be skeptical in the things that um that I think maybe it might be not quite right. But you know why? The world have turned things around, and we we thank him. We thank God. Uh, let's greet our Father, let's greet our Father, and I thank you, and I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus once again, and I thank you for connecting, and I thank you for connecting in our, for, for connecting for this service. Um, let's wave for our Father, and let's wave to our Lord, and I wave to you as well. I wave to you, and I say, God, may God bless you as you are connected. Your life will never be the same again in Jesus' mighty name. Let's start by clearing the atmosphere and welcoming the Holy Spirit because we can't do anything without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what protect, is what guide us and to protect us and to, um, to direct our path. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the true living God, we welcome you, Holy Spirit, in this platform. We welcome you, the Spirit of the true living God, and we honor you, Jehovah, for who you are, and we magnify your precious holy name for who you are. Father, we thank you, Father, for this morning that we have seen another day, O oh Lord. If, if not just because of your protection, we don't know where we'll be, O oh Lord, because some of, some of us, O oh Father, or some of our family, or some of our brothers and sisters, um, something happened to them. But Father, for us, we're still here and still trusting unto you. And I say, Father, help us, O Father, and protect us and continually, O Lord Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. Not just because we are better, just because you, you, we are protected. And just because, Father, we have a good relationship with you. Not that those who, de who departed or those who went home, they don't have their good relationship with you. They have the relationship with you. But Father, we have all, all our records in your hand, in the plum of your hand, and you have everything in your hand, Jehovah. And I say, Father, let your goodness and your mercy be upon us, O oh, Father, for the rest of our lives, give glory in the name of Jesus. May you forgive us, O oh, Father, for the rest of our lives, O oh, Lord, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. If there's anything that we have committed or we have done that is not pleasing to you, I ask you, Jehovah, to forgive us, give glory, and be with us and guide us and protect us, O oh, Father, in everything. Jehovah, we thank you. Jehovah, we honor you. Jehovah, we bless your name. Jehovah, we magnify your holy name because you are holy, Lord, Jehovah, in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we invite you in this ministry. We invite you in this mist. We invite you in our midst. And I ask you, Lord, to cover each and every one of us, O oh, Father, with the precious blood of Jesus. Those who are connected and those who are still going to connect and those who, those who will listen to the, voice, uh, to the voice of my, I mean, to the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus Christ. May they be healed. May they be favored by your power. May they be favored by you, O Lord Jehovah. And may they find favor with you and favor with men, Jehovah, in Jesus' name. And I ask you, Jehovah, to take total control in everything that you will do here, Jehovah, in Jesus' name. May you fill each and every one of us, O Father, with your spirit so that we can communicate with you in the spirit and we can reason with you in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the true living God, Holy Spirit, have your way. Lord Jesus, I invite you as well, my God and Savior, in the name of Jesus. And I know you are in the throne of grace, care and glory. I know that, Father, without you, we cannot do anything. Through, through We can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthen us in all ways, in Jesus' name. Have your way, my Lord. Protect us, O oh, Father. 
from any negative energy, from anything that is not of you, O Lord Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 I say from the beginning to the end of our programs, there will be no intruders. From the beginning to the end of our programs, there will be no error and mistakes in Jesus' name. We welcome the Holy Spirit once again, our Father, our Daddy. In Mark 14, chapter 14, verse 36 says, Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will, O oh Lord. And similar to Romans chapter, uh, chapter 8, verse 15, said, the spirit you receive does not make you slave, so, so that you, you live in fear. Give me one second here. Let's check what's going on here. Okay. 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 So we're just checking because sometimes um, the um, our ID and our code is not working. So I was just checking, sorry about that. I was checking whether, whether I have trouble, um, it, it is well. I was, uh, I was mentioning Romans chapter eight, verse 15, that the spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship and by him we cry, Abba, Father. This means our Father in other way, or our Daddy, our Father. Adonai, our Lord or my Lord, the God of hosts, the ancient of days. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 9 says, As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the ancient of days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and his wheels were all ablaze. And Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 says, In my vision at night, I'm reading from NIV, In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, Coming with the clouds of heaven, he appears or he approached the ancient of days and was led into his presence. In my vision at night, I looked and therefore, and there before me was one like a son of man coming with clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of days and was led into his presence. The, the, the things of God is sweet. And when you talk about our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of our lives and the King of kings, the apostle and high priest, God the Son, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the bright morning star, the line of the tribe of Judah, when there's trouble, when you call the line of the tribe of Judah and you call that line of, of Judah and you pray and you ask the line of Judah to appear, you'll see what is going to happen. Your enemies will melt. And whatever was bothering you, whether, whether what condition it is, will melt away. Because when the line of Judah rose, it makes a difference. The line of the tribe of Judah, Emmanuel. And the Bible says, if God is with us, who dare can be against us? So if God is with us, what to fear? You fear no evil. And some principles say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I shall fear no evil in Jesus' name. Let's read Psalm 134, uh, verse 1 to 3. Let's re all, all read it together. Psalm 134. Psalm 134, from 1 to 3, it's a short psalm is about praise. A call to praise God. A call to praise God. Come praise the Lord, all his servants, all who serve in his temple at night. Raise your hands in, your, in prayer in the temple. 
and praise the Lord. May the Lord who made heaven and earth bless you from Zion. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come and let's praise the Lord. As we are here, let's praise the Lord together. Um, let's praise the Lord together. It might be, we might have a beautiful song in our heart. Just sing it when we go along. You might have a, a, a prayer, you know, to praise God, we praise him in anything. Even in David, he said, I praise the Lord with the lyre, the harm, the flute, everything. The, whatever you can praise the Lord, sometimes even just to beat the drums or to make sound to the to glory of God, as long as the God knows that you are making that sound to him. You can have a, a, a voice, and my voice is a beautiful one ever. I normally, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I sing, but I, I'm, I, I, I'm not the, um, the, the, type, the type of the person that I can lead the praise and worship. Oh Lord, if I lead that, oh Lord, we thank God for, for our sisters that God has given them the voice to sing. I can crumble along, but my voice is to speak, or my voice is to praise the Lord, or not to, to, to say, yeah, I can praise the Lord or with my own thing. Because God says, the voice that I have given it to you is straight into my ears. Whenever you make sound, and I know that in your heart that you worship me, I, that's what I accept. No matter whether your voice is a crocodile voice or whatever, or whatever, horsey or whatever, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. In your closet, praise him. Everywhere, praise him. Anyway, praise him. Even if you are among the, 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 the people that they know how to see, just say something. God will give you that voice. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. Glory to God, glory to God. We're going to um, start going ahead with the, with the message. Um, don't kill the messenger. <clears throat> There's a way that don't kill the messenger. I am just a messenger who sent, or uh, God sent me, or trusted me to deliver his message. Because I know it's not me. It's be him that's, that's, that's speaking, or that talking, or speaking through me. I'm just a messenger. I'll deliver what the Lord want me to deliver. Yeah, when they said, don't kill the messenger, take what the messenger brought. <laughs> As they, I once have a friend, and he said he hate he hate the mailman, and why he hate the mailman? Because the mailman is always bring the bills. Then I said, but the mailman is working. I mean, him if if somebody is if he's bringing the mail to you, know that there's somebody who is bringing the mail to his house. By the moment he finish work and go home, he will find the mail of the bills at home. So he said, why well, don't kill him? and don't hate him, he's just a messenger to deliver the message, amen? So I'm just a messenger to deliver the message. Don't kill me, you'd rather kill the one that sent the message, if you can, but that one will not touch him because he's the one that created you. So today our message is wrong titles, wrong titles, wrong titles. Wow, you know when the Lord gives me this message, I wasn't too uh, too comfortable with it because I know the world is full of so many things. When God sent you to do something, we always hate the person who is sent. Or when God um, wants you to preach about the gospel of Christ, we hate the person that um, that God is to, uh, speaking through him. If they hated God and they hated Jesus Christ, who we are, we live by persecution, we live by hatred, anything that we might name it, but God is still in the throne of grace. When he sent you to do something, just do it. Let the reward be from God, not from man. Amen? God says he is not happy with the titles that people have or give themselves or give, the, to, give, the, or give to themselves those titles. And he said he'd not give it to them or to anyone. And he is not even aware of those titles. And he don't even know those people with those titles. 
God promote, as he said, he said, I promote and give titles or calling or anointing. He even said, I give gifts of calling, callings according to our, uh, according to your capacity, including myself, according to your capacity or call for. I, I promote, I can put one down and exalt another. Only me, meaning God. Only him. He can put one down and exalt another. And he is the one that gives the titles. He is the one that, that calls us in particular assignment that he knows that you are capable to. He cannot call you as a president, and you're not capable to be a president. He can call you, yes, when you are young, and be, to become a president. But he's not going to let you to become a president while you're a toddler. He's not going to call you a, a president, or he's not going to make you a president while you're a three year, uh, I mean, three, a six months old baby or a newborn what a newborn can do in that age. Because he knows that I gave him this title, but I'm going to raise him up till he become mature. After he finished drinking milk by bottle, after he finished being chewing bones, then there's a time that I will call him or I will assign him his assignment, the one that I have given it to him. And in that assignment, I will also going to give him the title that is assigned or line up with that title. In Psalms 75, verse, um, Psalm chapter 75, verse 7 says, it is God who judges, as I mentioned. He brings one down, he exalts another. In New Living Translation, it says, it is God alone who judges. He decides who will rise and, will, and who will or who will fall. God is God of order, not a God of confusion. Anything that will bring confusion in the works of God or in the plans of God or in the will of God, know that it's not of God. It's from another, another place. God is God. As he created heaven and earth, he put things together in order. He created heaven and earth. He created everything that needed to be. Even he put even this, the small insects, the plants, the, this, those insects to come to eat the plants. He created the, the trees and the seeds and everything. And after he created that and he said, this is well done now. And to whom he was talking to the Holy Spirit and Christ, he said, now we have created everything. Then let's create a man in our image that's why mankind they came to existence he did not create it anyhow anyway or to take a shortcut no he took time he made sure that he put this together even for for him to uh, to create a man because the, the, the remember from the beginning the whole world when he started it was just all water when they said the spirit of the true living god was hovering on top of the water that's the time when he's, he's creating and putting things together and assign where is going to be the river, where is going to be the sea, where is going to be the ocean and all those kinds. Where is going to be a dry land so that I will, when we make a man in our image, then the man will be able to, uh, to live someplace, not in anyhow. And what, 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 what is good about God is, he knew that we cannot stay in the water. If he knew that we can stay or live in the water, then he will have made or will, he will have made or make us to live in the water like the fish, like the, the crocodile, like the um the the shark, like the whale, because those are that they capable to live in the water. For us, we are not capable to live in the water. Unless otherwise, I have not heard that somebody can live in the water. A, a, a real human, a human being or a living, a, a living thing, unless it is made to be in the water. That's why he have put things together 
for 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 uh, in order for us to know that there is God, and if we work in order, even ourselves, we have to ourselves we have to make sure that we work in order. As I look at myself right now, and look at yourself, this is the head that how God created us, and we're going to go over this the, the scripture regarding that. And if the head does not have the body. It's going to look so funny because now we are accustomed to the body and the head to be attached together. But if it was not, and we just seen the head someplace, let's say, for example, my head right now, somebody saw it someplace, or maybe one of them all, and somebody else see my, my, my body, maybe in Scarborough, what the person will, 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 will think of. They will say, I saw Pono's body in Scarborough. But it's amazing that his body, I mean, his head, maybe was in Hamilton. So it's a, a scary thing to see. Yes, unless if maybe from the beginning that was happened before, then we can, we can sustain it. You won't be scared. But if apart from that, then it's going to be the, the, the top news of the year. That is something miracle or mystery. How can somebody's head be someplace and the body be someplace? Or maybe my legs some other place. That's why he created the head, the eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth, the chin. And for 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 our for us ladies or women, we thank God we have not have the mustache and all the beard and stuff like that. Our, our face is smooth. But when a woman has beard we sometimes wonder why but they said that the woman who have beard which means the woman is very strong the woman is going to be wealthy but it's it's not going to be like the men's mustache it's going to be maybe one or two but for the men to see for them to have the mustache they're accustomed to it and they know that they have to have the mustache or they have to have the beard because that's how god created them and for us even god created us in different way we have nails, we have, we have legs, we have, we, all of us, we have the legs, we have, uh, for women, we have uh, the boob of the breast. So th that's how God created us. And for men to have boob, uh, breasts, it's going to be uh, something odd right now because we are used for them not to have the breast unlike women. Because women, the breast is to breastfeed. That's why they call it breast, to breastfeed the baby. We have all the we have the hands, we have the legs, we have um, we, we we have the body parts, and that's what they call it the body of Christ. And when I say God is God of order, that's how He put this together. You see how organized He is. The head, the eyes, and it will look so funny if I have one eye right now unless if there's something wrong with my other, uh, or if I have created you with one eye, because we are used to both eyes. So that's why it's kind of custom to us. So if it's going to be one eye, people will be looking at you like funny, because it's not, it's odd in other way. In English standard version it says, but it is God who executes judgment, putting down one and lifting lifting up another. God does not want those who believe in him to, to use titles that are falsely trying to express someone with a greater spiritual rank or authority than others. God doesn't want that. So he's not pleased with the title that we tie ourselves onto. And some of them, we are not even, uh, they're too heavy for us. We are not even qualified for them. You know, God is not God of power, not power in the, the, world, the worldly power. God is not a God of confusion. Let me, let me put it that way. Where if God wanted us to, um, to be under him, it's easy to do it. If God wanted us or wanted Jesus Christ to, to have that shoulder to say, I am the child of the true living God. I know I'll be going home to heaven. You will be, maybe you'll rot on hell or you'll be able to make it to heaven. He will have done that. But that's not how God did, did things. He doesn't want us to be tied with the titles 
that some of them are too heavy for us. Some of them, some of us, we have the title that we cannot even handle them. When he said, I gave you the title, I, I, mean, I, I, I called you. I knew you from your mother's womb. And I know what you're entitled to. So he knew or he knows what we're entitled to. Like right now for me, it, it, by God's grace, my, when I grow, because the, the title is the same thing with the promotion at work. When you work hard and you, you get promoted, know that it's from your, um, from, your, from your working hard. And then that's where you can be create. you can be, um, you can be a, a, you can be promoted into something that you're entitled to. It's either a supervisor or it's either a manager or it's either something. And in the 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 the, the or in the, in the world, I, I believe there's maybe four or five titles or six, not as much as it is in right, right now in the body of Christ. We just call ourselves so many names. We just call ourselves in any how. You know, uh, the the any, the devil is the one the, is the one that uses titles because you want to cause harbor or you want to cause uh, you want to cause calamity or you want to cause fighting in the body of Christ. And those who love titles are the one that will fight because some of them they have given the titles and they're not even qualified for them uh, for those titles and it's not been they're not been called. For those titles. You're just being called this and you are not that and God doesn't know it. Do you think that you will please God? And I believe that when you pray and ask God if you don't know what you are called for, God will, will show you what you are called to be. What you are called to be. And if you are qualified again. And if you are promoted by God. Men cannot promote you. They give you title anyhow, in anyhow, in any case. I'm not too sure where those titles, what it might be related to. If just you, you know even the the person. Some of them we know them. That indeed, uh, uh, not that, that I'm limiting them. Indeed, that this person need to grow a little bit more in order for that particular person to be given that title. If it's from God, God will work it out. But if it's from men, and we know that that particular person is not entitled to this title, then that's those ones that they, are questionable. And those are the ones that God is not pleased with them. If it's God that gives you title, you don't have to fight for it. And that's why most of the time, we even fight for those titles, because it's not for us. Because you want to take somebody's title or you want to take somebody's calling by force because you think that you are, you, you are superior. And those, those titles, some of them are not from God. They're from some place. When God gives you a title, he knows he prepares you. And it's the title that we are born with. When a child is born, if you can, you can look at the baby, they're always holding their little hands like this. Why? Because they are born with a gift. And that gift, you can, no one can take it from them. If that child is called to be a priest or to be um, a bishop or whatever it might be, you cannot take it away from it. You might be jealous of it and fight the, the child and maybe kill the child, but you will die with his gift or his calling or his title. You won't do anything with it. For God forbid that the killing and fighting is not it's not our, our, our portion in Jesus' name. The Apostle Paul taught that even he did not claim authority over anyone's faith, but rather saw himself as someone who helped, in, who helped increase a person's joy in God. We all know what, for what was all about Pastor Paul, um, I mean, Apostle Paul was a murderer, was a killer, a raider, everything you can name them before Christ convert him and choose him to be the one that will preach the gospel of Christ. You see how it, it, it happened. He was a murderer and he was this and that, but God chose, God chose him 
and at the end of the day, they give him the title of, of to be apostle. Why? Because he worked hard for it. If you can, you can go back and read the, the story of Apostle Paul, what he passed through, he passed through a lot in order to gain that title. He was put in prison. He was put in so many kinds of things as a test from converting to who he was to, to where God wanted him to be. It's a journey. It doesn't come in a day. It doesn't even come by sacrifice of other stuff or sacrifice or, 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 or human being. It's by God's, I mean, it's by God when he calls you into that. Second Corinthians chapter one, we're going to read some second Corinthians chapter one, verse 23 to 24. I'll read from the common Bible, I mean, English Bible. It said, I call on God as my witness. I didn't come again to Corinthians because I wanted to spare you. It isn't that we, we are trying to control your faith, but we are working with you for your happiness because you stand firm in your faith. I will read it in, in, into the Living Bible, and now we will narrate it. It's still 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23 to 24. I call upon this God to witness against me if I'm not telling the absolute truth. The reason I haven't come to visit you yet is that I don't want to sadden you with a severe rebuke. When I come, although I can't do much to help your faith, for it is strong already, I want to be able to do something about your joy. I want to make you happy, not sad. And why is he talking about that? What, what is he really talking about? He is talking about those titles because he said, I don't want to come there and rebuke you. I want when I come, at least I will join, I will, I will, I will, I will, uh, I will make you happy, not sad. I will boost you in your faith. Not that when I come, then everybody is doing whatever they want. And everybody, they grab the title, whatever they want, or they're into this title and they're not qualified for it. And maybe even a, a, a two-year-old child. Is a bishop. This is, not, this is not a crime. When a child is a bishop, let a child grow so that he can able to handle that title. I mean that title. Not to be a bishop and a child cannot even speak. Not be a apostle that a child cannot even speak. Let the child grow and let God, when he know now that the child is matured, is not in a baby bottle. He can chew bones and mean two harder bones than the bones that he can be given. Then he knows that now I can choose this child or I can use this child as David. As David. David was a shepherd boy in the field. He didn't come right away, even after his anointing. But God knew him. He sent someone to go and anoint him. And Jesse tried to bring his handsome children, the one he knows that he, they're entitled and they're capable and some of them are strong in statue. But he said, no, it's not the one. You mean it's the, the, the only children that you had? And he said, oh, you know, you see now, David can be even forgotten, was forgotten. He said, oh, yeah, I have another one. I have another one is in the, in the bush. And he said, I'm going to stand here. We are not even going to eat anything. I'm going to stand here till that one comes. If it's not coming, I will stand and we are not going to eat. So they have to send for David. You see how God promoted? He was just in the, in the, in, in the field with the, with, the, with the sheep as a shepherd boy with the flocks. He did not even think of anything like that. That's how God works. You can be in the field, you can be in the bar, you can be in some place, and you are not aware of it, that, that God is going to remember you today. And God will do it. Because God do, works with heart. He doesn't work with appearance. He doesn't work with what we see. 
He works with the heart and he knows what you will be entitled for in the near future when you grow. David was called from the field and immediately he gets in and he said, yes, that's the one that God want me to anoint. You see how the, the titles and the, the anointing of God do and works, how God works? And he was anointed to become a king. And it didn't happen that, that day. After getting his anointing, he still went back to the fields to take care of the, the flocks. For him to be able to stand and to mature so that now he can be the king. Even when he was in, in, Saul, in, in, in Saul's house, after he was being called to come and play the, the, the harp or the, the flute or whatever it is, it was for, for this king who, who was oppressed. You see how God works? The one who will take the, the, the title is the one that will help you regardless, the shepherd boy, to come in and play the music for you so that that depression can go, go can be better. That's how God works. And he didn't, uh, he didn't boast after right there when he was anointed. No, he still go early in the morning to go to, to take the, the flocks, his father's flocks, to the, to the field or to the bush to be able to, 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 to graze. Till that time comes when God said, now you are matured. You can take that. How many times he fight the battle when Saul tried to kill him? How many times he, he, the God protected him from the, the, the spear or the arrows that Saul was, was shooting to him? It's the same thing with us. May we wait upon the Lord. May we wait upon the Lord so that he can give you that title and he will give you strength and energy and power to operate through it and wisdom as well. If God is not even, is not even pleased to the title that you give yourself or they give it to you, so what is the use of carrying that title? Because if you are a child by yourself or if you cannot handle the title and you have given that huge title, do you think that it is is benefit to you? No, it doesn't benefit anything to you. You can fall with the title, or you can fall with the, the you can fall yes with that title. Or let's say the, God give you a cross, and you don't know whether the cross have to be in, 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 in straight. You might take it upside down, like for this lamp. If this lamp it should be like this, when it's working well, it should be like this. But since I don't know how this works, because it's not for me, then I might put it this way, upside down. Why? Because I'm still a child, but I don't know other stuff that God have not brought me into that. Into, into or God have not given me that title. If you are a, 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 a if you are a, 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 a deacon, or you are a, you and Asha, work in your title. God will elevate you from that, and work work on it diligently, with all your heart and your soul and your spirit, because that's what you are given to. This is one of your assignment. He cannot give you one million while you cannot handle fifty dollars. He cannot give you a mansion while you cannot even handle. A one or two bedroom. He give you a mansion when he knows that you can handle it and you can maintain it and sustain it. N don't take me wrong. Not saying that he cannot bless you with the with the mansion. God bless to what he knows that you will be able to take care of it. It's the same thing with us, the shepherd. God will bless you with the sheep that he knows that you, you will be entitled to or will be able to take care of them and be able to pray for them, be able to encourage them. When they're in distress, you speak the word of encouragement to them and they feel better. Why? Because God 
gave you that capability or God gave you that anointing and calling to be able to do that. You cannot speak if you are not called to be a, a speaker. You cannot run while you are not in athletics. You cannot sing while you are not a musician. You cannot sing well while you are not a musician. You can crumble like me. Yes, it's not hard to do that. But for, 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 for you to sing well, you have to, to be, your voice to be, to, uh, to, to be made or to be, uh, to, be, uh, to, to be the voice of somebody or to be given that voice to sing. If you are not a dancer, you'll go out of the tune because you are not a dancer. You cannot if you're not a dancer. Like for example, um, when you talk about the, the uh, 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 they might be in, uh, with God and not too sure. Like when you talk about those musicians, like say for example, John, uh, Jennifer Lopez, she can dance well and you don't you know whether she has bones or whatever. But for me to do that, oh Lord Jehovah, tomorrow or that uh, when I'm done, if God can give me that strength to be able to sing like that, when I'm done, they have to call the ambulance and the fire department and the police and all of them to come and carry me to the hospital because I can't even stand because I'm not flexible for that. I'm not called to dance that, that, that dance, but she's called to dance like Michael Jackson to be an entertainer. You're not called to do that. And you have to, you have to make sure that you practice in order to get to that. Amen? And second, oh, I think we, 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 we read that. It's a, a living Bible. It said, I call upon this God to witness against me if I'm not telling the, oh, that we, we read that. Yeah. That's, uh, that's the, 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 um, the calling of God or the anointing or the, the, to carry the title in order for you to carry it well. And in Matthew chapter, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 14, before we can go there, Matthew, Matthew chapter 22, verse 14, it says, and Jesus concluded, many are invited, but few are chosen. Many are invited, which means many are called, but few are chosen. We are many in the world, but few are chosen. Not everybody will be the head. Not everybody will be the tail. I mean, the, 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 yes, not everybody will be the tail. And for God forbid, there will no tail. Tail is for animals. We will never, none of us will never be the tail. Many are chosen, and we can all we cannot all be doctors. So if we are all be doctors, who is going to be a patient? And we cannot all be in retail. And if we are in all retails, who is going to who is going to who is going to be a customer to come and support the, the business? Who will go, who will support the, the, the business if we are all, all in the same business? I know Africa, where I come from, this that spirit of spirit of jealousy. That when one start a business, let's say I uh, like what I was what I do back when I used to do back home. I was selling clothes, and I started my business. I was selling clothes, so everybody was selling clothes. So who's going to buy to another? Not say that that. The, uh, they don't have to, they can, but at least try something different. That's, that's copy from somebody who started the, that. Do something that what you, which you know that you, you might, you are good at. If we can all be teachers, who's going to be the, the student now, then? Who's going to be the, stu the student to come to learn? May God deliver us from that spirit in Jesus' name. 
And again, we do, people do not want to be corrected. And nowadays in the body of Christ is sad, which you shouldn't be. In the body of Christ, that's where peace and love and joy that has supposed to be. But it's all power. And those big titles and names that are not from God, that's why it's bringing confusion. That's bringing confusion. There's no peace. There's no joy in the body of Christ. There's no togetherness. There's no unity. There's no unity. I'm not saying that we cannot be promoted. God promotes, as I mentioned. God promotes. God gives titles. God elevates. But let's wait upon the Lord. He will give you what he knows you are entitled to. If you are not entitled to that and you want to go and get it from someplace, the disgrace and the fall is not going to be too good. Because when you fall, you fall. Because you fall with the things that you thought is for God. Or is the, you thought is for God and it's not for God. It's for another thing. May we wait upon the Lord and he renew our strength. May we wait upon the Lord that he knows that now we are matured. We can do his will and we can do it diligently. We are not going to take a shortcut. According to his will, not according to what, what we think that we know. We do not know nothing. The Spirit of God is what helps us to know or to do what he wants us to do or to lead us to what he wants us to do, not to what we want. If we all do what we want, more especially in the body of Christ, then we are misleading or we are misleading people. We are misleading people. We are even destroying them. And the, 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 the blood is in our hands. Will we be able to stand that? No, it's not going to be an easy thing. And you know, you know I like those days. <clears throat> I like the olden days. I like the Old Testament and I like the New Testament before, or, or I can say the, 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 the new or the Old Testament or the, the, the nowadays test, uh, testament. Because the nowadays testament is a, is a, is a wrong thing. We used to call, when, I, when, when the Lord opened my eyes, we used to be brothers and sisters. We used to call one another brothers and sisters. And it was, for me, it was working so well. Because we did not discriminate or we did not disassociate one another. And when you call brothers and sisters, let it be from your heart. Because we are Christ-like. Let's not call a brother and sister. And I, when I turn my back, you do like this to me. Or you say, no, in my language. That's not a good thing. Let, let's, let us ask God to help us to love one another. The love of Christ. And go back to call one another brothers and sisters. That thing, that, that, for me, that thing did work. Because there was no those titles. It was brothers and sisters. Unless if it's a, it's a shepherd, then you want to, to associate him a little bit. Because not that we have to worship him, but we have to respect them. Because that is our shepherd. then we can call them my pastor or my uh, minister or my, um, my, 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 my prophet or my bishop or all of But when they are called, I'm not saying the title that somebody just put it, just, just throw it on you because you want to make you happy. The title that somebody throw it to you to make you happy is not going to be a good thing for you. It's going to be too heavy, very, very heavy. You cannot even handle it. 
And if God doesn't know it, that you have been entitled, we have entitled to, it's going to be too heavy. It's a shame too. It's shame. Shameful. And most of the time, there used to be this little, this, 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 this girl, a, a young girl, but into witchcraft. The things that God hate most. And she was uh, given the title to become a minister. Get my point then? A witch, I mean a witch that we all know that is a witch and has not been delivered or set free yet and given a title to be a minister. And what do you think that that person is going to do in the body of Christ? Those who are not into that. Because if you are into that, then that's, that's, a, that's better if you are not entitled to that. I mean, if you're not for that, because it's the same best with the same flock, the, the, flight, the, the flock together. But if you're not for that, and you know that this person is into witchcraft, and the person has been given the title to be a minister or to be whatever name they, they, meant, they, they named them, and how and when, and which God is given that person uh, the, the, the title? And which God is given that person the title? Then you have to question and ask yourself, is this person really, th this title is really from God? Or where am I going to find myself? And if this person is a minister, so he will be ministering to me, and the person is into his car. What am I going to learn? To be a witch because I was trying to work so hard to be not involved into those. And the person is given the title and you don't know where the title come from. And you embrace that title. And if that person did not been given that title is a problem too. Because we cannot give everybody a title. It's the same or above or whatever when, when you think of. Or maybe I don't understand where those titles are coming from. I know I do understand. But if it's not from God, let's not do it. Please, 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 my brothers and sisters, let's not do it. God is not pleased with this. And if he said he doesn't even know who, who you are, and he doesn't know where the title comes from, which means it's a sad thing. You are, it's your title by yourself. And God is not helping you into that title because it's not from God. May God help us. And may God help us to go back to call one another brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters is the better thing. We grow from there. If God elevates you, we'll elevate you from there. If God promote you, will promote you from there according to what he sees and according to what he knows what you can do and you, you are capable to. Ephesians chapter 6, 20, chapter 6 verse 20 to 22 says, I was sent to do this work and that's the reason I am in jail. So pray that I will, I will be brave and will speak as I should. That's his Paul. Even himself, he said, pray that I can be, I can be brave and speak as I should, because we cannot speak anyhow. And we have to ask to help us to be brave in order. And he, even when he was speaking, he said, I am in jail. The things of God, there's too many um, opposition and there's a lot of persecution if it's from God. You have to be matured in order to handle those such. If it's not of God, from God, then it's from another place which I don't know, then maybe you can stick with it. But if it's from God, then there's a lot 
to deal with. And God is the one that gives you the, the power and the authority to be able to handle that. And God is the one who will sustain you in terms, in terms of those. Christian, we, we are in jail. Or the ministers, or, or not the minister, let me not even talk about that. Or the, the, the shepherd. Or God's messengers. Let me say that. It's like jail, or let's say the body of Christ. It's more than a jail, because the persecution is more than what you can handle. The attacks is more than what you can handle. It's only God who will help you and, and, and protect you to go through. You remember when I started? I said, I am just a messenger delivering God's message. Don't kill the messenger. You rather kill the, the one who sent the messenger. If you can shoot, shoot him. Not me. I'm just a messenger to deliver the message for what the Lord is not pleased with. And verse 21 to 22 said, um, it's final greetings. I want you to know how I'm getting along and what I'm, I'm doing. That's why I am sending Tekias te to you. He is a dear friend as well as a faithful servant of the Lord. He will tell you how I'm doing and he'll cheer you up. Paul is in jail, but he's sending somebody that he trusts and God trusts to go and cheer them up and to go and tell them how Paul is doing in jail. The jail is a good, a good place. No, it's not a good place. It will never be a good place either. But he's sending Tekias to him because he said, dear friend, you know, if we can come to call one another a dear friend or my dear brother or my dear sister, then we are in the right track. And with the, with, with, the, with the love of Christ, then we are in the right track. But if you hate one another because of somebody or, or because of God gave that particular person uh, or, or, or he, the person is called to be or the person is chosen to be, then we hate that particular person because of the anointing, because of the calling, then we are not of God. God is love. God operates where there's love. God does, uh, doesn't operate where there's no, there's no love. Trust me with that. And he, when he said, he's going to cheer you up, which means he, he is going to boost you. Because as a body of Christ, the Bible says, iron sharpen iron. I cannot go to somebody who I know that he doesn't like me or he doesn't love me or like me, let's put it that way, to ask for that person to cheer me up. No, or to boost me up. I won't. Do I know that the person is going to boost me up or is going to put me more down like when I'm going there? Or if I have a burden, uh, do I know that that person will help me? No, that person will never help me to, to or pray with me for the burden to be lifted away. He will put more pressure on me. Why? Because of the anointing, because of the calling, because of the title, God may be giving it to me. It's the same thing. But if somebody is coming to cheer you up, then somebody, which means that particular person, is really indeed from God. He's not coming to tear you down or to draw you down. He's coming to cheer you up, to boost you. Because the, um, the, 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 the assignment of God, none of them is easy. Trust me, none of them is, is not, and uh, none of them is easy. Some of them is even hard, and they can be harder. Like, see, right now, Paul was okay when he was still in the world and persecuting Christian. But the moment he became a, he became a servant of God, there's a time when the problem started more than when he was killing even murdering people. 
Why? Because you serve Christ. Or you are for God now. That's how God is. The things of God, they're not easy. And if they're not easy, then we need to boost one another. We need our brothers and sisters to boost one another, to cheer one another up, not to tear one another down. If you are not calling to that, don't fight your brother. Cheer them up so that they can do the, 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 they can do the good job. They can do the assignment well, the will of God well, because we are cheering them up. But if we are cheering them down, they cannot be able to. And that's what is happening in the body of Christ. We are not tearing one another up. We are, drawing, we are, we are tearing one another down. And even they say attendance of, they can even tell you that this particular person is not qualified. I always said God is the one who qualifies. God is the one who qualifies, not a man. And God is the one who called. David was called in the bush to be anointed to become a, a king. His brother were there that were qualified. If they, if they were qualified, they were qualified in the world. And they were qualified for what we see. And maybe the body stru structure or whatever. Maybe the speech. Moses said when God was sending him to Egypt, he said, oh, father, you know that I'm not a man of many ways. I cannot even speak. And I know Pharaoh is a stubborn man. So how am I going to handle that? Aaron, my brother, I know he has a good speech. He can speak and he can even be able to convince Pharaoh to, to set your, your children free. He said, okay, does he know Moses? He said, okay, I'll make sure that your brother Aaron will meet you the other side, will meet there. But, you see now, there's but in there, but you'll be like God to him. Whatever I tell you, tell him he will do it. Working together. Aaron, he did not say no. You know, Moses, you cannot speak. I'm the one who have all the eloquent speech. So you cannot speak. So I'm the one who have to get this. Aaron was obedient to God. Because God said to, to, uh, to Moses, you go and I'll make sure that your brother will meet you there. God went and spoke to, to Aaron as well when, when, when he was sending Moses. So they were able to work together. And they were able to... God ever make them to be able to deliver or to, to deliver the children of to take the children of the Israelites out from Egypt, those who loved to, to leave or to go or to be set free. They did work together. He did not say, Oh, you Moses, I know we grew up together, and you, I know you, you are not a man of many speech, you cannot speak. I'm the one that speaks. And no, no, he did not do that. And he obeyed even because he knew that Moses is a different man. Why? Because of the calling, because of the anointing. And, and whatever God asked him to do, and he do it, and it, it does come to pass. He did not bluff, but for us, it's pride. We bluff. And you can even call one another that we are not entitled to. Who is entitled to the things of God? It's only God who calls. And it's only God who promotes. It's only God who elevates. It's only God who chooses, not who called, who chooses. Who is entitled to do this? And who will be faithful to serve him? Who will obey him till the end to serve him? When he said, do this, you do it diligently. You don't do it on your own power. We don't have power. God is the one who has the power. God is the one who speaks through us. God is the one who deliver. God is the one who gives us strength to be able to sustain, to sustain. I mean, the time, of the, the, the days of evil. And I mentioned that those titles and the names is what causing trouble in the body of Christ. People are fighting for titles and it, it's bringing completely confusion, for, uh, hatred. Jealousy, envy, frustration. You can name them all in the body of Christ. The church are falling apart. 
because of jealousy. And we don't see it that way. The gossiping in ministry on the churches is too much. Don't be surprised when God throws the churches. And don't take me wrong in that. Because he's not pleased with whatever is happening in the church. When we say this is a church of the temple, of the synagogue, let it be peace. Let's serve God. But to the places that are where I went, or the churches where I went, I'm not, I'm not saying it was, it, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not saying a bad thing or saying wrong thing about it. But what, what is happening there is the titles, jealousy, hatred, envy to one another. Even for us women, we'll be looking how, how you put, what, what you dress in that day. Do you have those type of high heels? What did you dress today? If you didn't dress to that standard above them, they will be talking about it. They will say, wow, you saw her today. Uh, she didn't put it together. Oh, what did she wear today? Oh, Lord, what color? What, did, what type of shoes you wear? And you, you love your shoes. You love, you love where we dress. Because I believe each and every one of us, more, more especially but, uh, women, we look into the mirror before you leave. And before you apply the, nail, the lipstick, there's no how you can apply lipstick without looking at the mirror or the, the foundation or whatever. You, you apply it, you look into the mirror. And when you leave, you leave. If you do not wear or dress to somebody's standard, bad to them and good for you. Cheer yourself up. Because this is the cause, the things that, that cause trouble in the ministries. That's the thing that's called troubles in the churches. That is the thing that's called troubles in the body of Christ. It's not by the garment, it's by your heart. And carry your cross. We are going there to worship God. We are going to the churches to worship God. We are not going to check who dress what and who drive what. It's not a competition thing. It's to glorify our Father. It's to exalt our Father. It's to worship Him in spirit and truth. Not by what the garment we wear. You can wear a thousand dollar dress. It doesn't mean anything if your heart is not for God. And if you went there for competition, we love competition. That's what to destroy the body, the body of Christ. That's what caused trouble in the ministries on the church. People, they don't even want to go to churches anymore because of this trouble. You go to church instead of going and lift, uh, lift your spirit up or leave the burden there. You come back with another trouble on top of whatever you went there with. with. When we prefer to be at home, how to be in the, in the bush and go and worship your God there because God is everywhere. I like to come to, do, to, 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 to the church or inside those buildings to find yourself into trouble. And the dirty look too. The moment you get in, if it's not the church of, it's not the church of God, the way they will look at you, Lord Jesus, the dirty look, if you dress well, better than them or better than the pastor's wife. Or better than the pastor, if the pastor is a woman, because the woman are the one that we are, we, we are in trouble. May God deliver us from that spirit in the name of Jesus. May God deliver us from spirit of jealousy in Jesus' mighty name. May God deliver us from spirit of envy. May I maintain my business, not somebody's. May I maintain my own self, not somebody's. May I look into my own self, not somebody's. This is said that why do you have to look in somebody's eyes and you cannot see what is in your eyes? Look first in your eyes. And when you serve Christ, and when you are a Christian, Christ-like, we have to make sure that we resemble Christ. Not I'm full of hatred, then I call myself a Christian, then I will, love, I will be lying to myself. And let me tell you this, do you know why we Christian, we end up being falling into trouble? Because you trusted a person that is your, 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 your brother or your sister in the church. And we thought that we have the same spirit of Christ. And those are the things that cause us to trouble. Not knowing that some of them are the wolves in the sheepskin. 
and you would lay into them as a brothers and sisters, not knowing that the person is an, the person is, some of them they have been sent in the church to come and destroy you from the church and to see how, how, what how your relationship with God is and to see what you dress to to, to check in everything. Some of them, they send there to destroy you in the church. And the church is the place that where you're supposed to be, that evil have to be prevented. Or evil should not come to the church or into the ministry. Or into the synagogue. But that's where a lot of evil is happening. That's why people, they don't want me to, to hear anything. You, we, it's even hard for us to preach the gospel of uh, to, to preach the gospel of Christ. You cannot even share. You cannot even invite anybody to the church, to the church. People, they run away, they say, who, me? I'd rather go to the bar or to the club. I'd like to go and cause me, it cause myself trouble in the church. You go with our church. My God is everywhere. I'm with God. And if that's how it should be. No, it shouldn't be that way. If we are the body of Christ, it should be love and peace and joy. And when your, your brother is crying, cry with them. When they're celebrating, celebrate with them. That when they not like when they're, they're celebrating, you are not happy that with that celebration. When they're crying, that's what, you want, what, that's what you want. When they're not happy or sorrow or anything. That's too sad in the body of Christ, too bad. May God change us. May God touch our heart. In Jesus' name. I'm not too sure what is going to happen with this corona. With the churches. Unless we will all change. If we can change, that's better. God can have mercy upon us again. If not, then take me wrong. Then take me wrong. We don't know what is going to happen with the church or the ministry. We don't know. Because we have been not doing the right thing. We have not doing the right thing. Unless if we repent. God is a merciful God. God is love. And some of us, we are taking the, 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 the church as a business. If you want to have a lot of money, start a business. Don't expect that church is going, that's what's going to sustain you. If you want to, to be a billionaire, not saying that God cannot bless you, he can bless you, but don't think of the business of God, that is what is going to sustain you. You can, you can be a minister, yes. You can be a pastor or whatever. But if you want to be, uh, to be, to the other standard that the pastor doesn't, because people, they think that the pastors are poor. Yes, you might be poor. Why? Because you serve God and you are not after the material stuff. You are after the souls, after the flocks, whether they are safe or not. You can be wealthy, no problem with that, but don't make the, 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 the word of God as a business with those titles. Don't make the, the church as a business or as a, uh, uh, as a business that will bring money for you. The money is not even for you. The money is for the, the widows or for God, let's put it that way. And when you take care of God's business, we are doing the right thing. May God change our mind in Jesus' name. May God deliver us from that in Jesus' name. May God deliver us from that in Jesus' name. May God deliver us. It's so sad that in the body of Christ or in the church, or churches, whatever it is, there's no love. If there's no love, know that there's no God. Because God doesn't operate where there's no love. Even at home, 
if there's no love, it's hard to see the, to feel the spirit of God or the, the, to, to, to see um, the, 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 the presence of God in that place. Why? Because there's no love. If God said, uh, love one another, and you cannot love one another, and what do you expect? And if there's no love in the church, whenever you get, you get into that place, they look at you like you are from another planet or from Mars or Pluto or Jupiter, all those. You are not like, the, the, you, the, 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 you know, they look at you like you are not even uh, belongs into this or you are not even supposed to be here. Let me say for, for us, with our race, it's terrible. It's terrible. May God change us. May God deliver us so that we can serve him without those kind, bright, and find ourselves given a title that is not from him and loving one another and respecting one another. That's what God wants. If you can turn things around and we change and depend, God is still merciful. Christ never gave any human being the absolute power to dictate the doctrine for all other believers and rule over their faith. You know, Jesus Christ did not carry the power and title in his head. He was very humble. Even when Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? In Mark 15, chapter 2, he said, so Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Instead of saying, as, as we are expecting, that you will have said, yes. I am the king of the Jews. So what do you think? Or what is your problem with that? If you was that type of person that loved the title, or he sees himself as superior there, as the son of the true God, he did not say that. He said, you have said so. Jesus replied. And I believe in his heart, he said, I know you asked me this, so that you can cause trouble, you can cause, you can cause me trouble or, or cause myself into trouble. But instead of saying that, he said, you deal with it, Pilate. You are the one who say that. You are the one who say it. So if you are the one who say it, then you don't have to blame me for nothing then, because you said it. And Mark 15, no, chapter, the same chapter 15 in, in New Living Translation say, so Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He, Jesus replied, you have said it, which means you are the one who's saying it. I'm just here quiet, waiting for my persecution, waiting for the will of God to be done. And I'm here arrested for nothing that I have done. So you are asking me those questions. You are the one who's saying it. Let's see what you will do with that. Because as for him, I believe he inside him, he said, I'm not even going around and mentioning it as I should have mentioned it. As even they know that he's the son of God. He did not even say it as much as he did. Unless the time when he was asking them, his disciples, who do you think that I am? They know that there's something special in this man. But who is he? And whatever he speaks is something different and makes something different and make our life um, change to a, a better or different. But he did not carry the title because if it was somebody who would say, I'm the child of, I'm the, child of the, the Most High God, I'm the Messiah, I'm the one who, who, who came and set you free, or this and that. But Christ was humble. It's them who said it. 
and some of them they did not know what's going on with this man, but they were with him. They knew that there's something special about him, unless God revealed to him as He did reveal to Peter. He said, "You are the Messiah. You are the Son of the, the true living God." Like John, when Jesus appeared into into the into the sea, he said, "Here is the Lamb of God." Nobody introduced introduced him. And he did not even say anything. And he, here is the sum of the, the, the Lamb of God who, have, who came to save the world. I have been telling you that I'm baptizing you with water. But that one that is coming, he will baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit or with the Holy Spirit and fire. But the moment he appeared, he recognized him that he is the Messiah. The things of God, you recognize them. The person who is called, you recognize them. Why? By the anointing. It's not by what the title they give it to them. Or they tie them into the title. It's not by man power. It's by God's power and God's will. You know, I love my Lord Jesus Christ. He was full of wisdom. And did not have that, that pride in himself. That's how I liked him. Even to him to drive a donkey or to ride a donkey. It's just to show you how humble he, he is. It's not God, it's not meaning that God did not uh, have a plan or cannot make a plane from heaven to come down here for Jesus to be to be flying around preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ or a car by that time. It was easy for him to do it. But he did not do it. He just wanted us to learn from him the humility, the humbleness. Imagine if he's one of those title lovers. If they were like Jesus Christ, those title lovers, what do you think it will be? What do you think that they will, they will act? They will want us to brush their shoes as we did some of them. Or they will want the whole world to be, um, to, to, uh, to, to be, um, what, what do you call that? Uh, to, to be tired or whatever. With the with the 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 the, the tire road, the thing there on the on the road, or to be um, to to cover the whole the whole world with the cement or like the sidewalk how it is that there there shouldn't be any sand, and where they live there shouldn't be any soil or anything. Even the plane or the jet or the car that they drive, I don't know whether there's something that is being made in heaven. I have not heard that. Maybe that plane should be from heaven that they will ride. Or the car that they drive should be invented from some place. The house that they mentioned that they were living in, or the house that they were living in, should be sparkling. Like it's something that we, we cannot even, uh, as women, for us, we cannot even afford to, do, to, to, to handle it. Even the food that they will eat, or the clothes that they will dress as a child of the Most High God. We have seen it so many times that things are happening from those title lovers. They're not there to serve God, it's just there for that title. And where that title is going to take you, no way. You will not go anywhere with that title. It will not take, it will not take you to, to heaven either. If God said he doesn't know you, no, he doesn't even know you, that title, who gave it to you? If he said, I don't even know you, so what do you expect? It's too sad, isn't it? Too sad. Some of the things are biblical. And why are we reading the Bible though? And which scriptures are we reading? The one that suits us? And the one that God is not happy or pleased about it? Do we read them? Because there's a lot of, the, the lot of scriptures that God rebuked. And after he said whatever he said, sometimes he said, those are the things that disgusted me. 
And after he said that, he said, I, the Lord, have spoken. And no one will change that. I, the Lord, have spoken. Which means you cannot change it. It's period. Let's read the first Corinthians chapter 12. I think we can even start from verse 1. Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 1 to 27. Now we want to know who we are and what we're supposed to do and how we have to handle the things of God, the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I'll read from verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 12, but I have it here. First Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 1. I'm reading from a Good News. Gifts from the Holy Spirit. Now concerning what you wrote about the gifts from the Holy Spirit, I want you to know the truth about them, my friends. You know that while you were still hidden, you were led astray in many ways to the worship of li lifeless idols. I want you to know that no one who is led by God's spirit can say a curse on Jesus. A curse by itself is not a, just a curse, what we say or what we, do, what, what we can think of. When you are using the name of Jesus in vain, it's a curse. And when instead of saying Jesus Christ or Jesus, you say Jesus something, or Jesus, or Jesus, or Jesus, or whatever, you said it, it's a curse. And when you say Jesus Christ is not the son of the true living God, it's a curse by itself. When we don't honor him and respect him and acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior, it's a curse. Why? Because he came here to die for us. It's not that something he was pleased to do. It's just to set us free, to save us. And no one can confess Jesus is Lord without being guided by the Holy Spirit. No one can confess that Jesus Christ or that Jesus is Lord without being felt by the Holy Spirit. That's why it's so very hard for us. Some of them, I think I mentioned when I started, I said some of them, they say Jesus is not the son of the true God. Why? Because they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. So if you are not filled by the Holy Spirit, you cannot say that. And you won't believe it if you don't even have faith. You won't believe that Jesus is the Son of the true living God. Or Jesus is Lord. They call him so many things. Some of them, they said he's a prophet. He was just a messenger being sent here. And maybe we, we can relate him as the other prophets that they were here. They're completely different than him. And you cannot know him while you're not in the spirit. It's the same thing with the things of God. The things of God to you to do to do them diligently. You have to be in the spirit. Even to pray, just a simple prayer, even to praise, you have to be in the spirit in order to do it well. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit gives them. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit of God is the one that gives them. The same thing like the titles is God who gives who gives to them. Or gives it to, the, to us. There are different ways of saving, but the same Lord is saved. There are different ways of saving. We can be in the ministry, serve as, a, 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 as an usher, or the one that cleans the church very well, and you don't complain. Um, for me, I appreciate if somebody does respect the anointing or whatever they know that God have used me um, to change their lives. 
they can carry my bag or my Bible. But in the natural, I don't appreciate it because I don't want anybody to 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 worship me. I'm not God. I'm not God. I'm just a messenger. I'm the servant. I'm the shepherd. I'm not God. Yeah, if you do it and you do it not to brag or to bluff, that's better. Or if you do it and you want me to love you than others, then that's a sad thing. I love everyone equally. Unless if you're my enemy. In that case, then we have to, to deal it in a different way. But I'm still going to love you. I won't love the spirit that is inside you. That's us operating to hate me. But I will love the person, but not the spirit. And I'll make sure that that spirit have to be cast out so that you can be free. Because there's no freedom in that. You cannot be free in doing those kind of things. And I, I prefer to carry my bag because like that's my luggage, isn't it? It's, it's my cross. I prefer to carry my Bible. I prefer to carry my bag on my handbag. There's no, no problem with that. Yes, you can do it with love, but don't do it to bluff or for me to love you. Or do you think that we're expecting a different prayer than the prayer that I pray for others? You won't get it from me because I do what God wants me to do. I do the will of God. I don't do my will. I don't even have one. And I don't carry the title that somebody will want me to, 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 or to give it to me or to throw it to me like that. No, I won't take it. I will wait upon the Lord. Because you might, give, you might give me something that I'm not, I, I'm not capable to, and something that I can, cannot do it. And you just want to put pressure on me because of that. I won't take it. I rather wait upon the Lord. And I know when it's the God that's giving it to me, I know that I will do it well. Because God is the one who is training me and who is doing it through me and who is helping me to work on my assignment. Not a man. You can just throw that title anyhow. It's not, you are not going to help me with that. Just to brag and laugh by bluff. There are different, I mean, chapter, uh, verse six, there are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives ability to all for that particular service. The same God is the one that gives the ability to perform into that particular service. You cannot be called, let's say, <clears throat> called a prophet. Don't take me wrong in that. I'm making an example here. You cannot be called a prophet or a prophetess. And you cannot prophesy accurately. You'll be lying to people. Or you cannot be called a prophet or a prophetess. And the prophecy that you are prophesizing is not from God. It's wrong. Prophesy for what God is giving to you. That's why we go and get the other stuff to be able to lie to people or to prophesy to people. And we are not called to be a prophet. That thing is shameful because the downfall of it, because God is not in it. In it the downfall of it is, is, is a disgrace. We don't want to be in that. We don't want to put ourselves into that. Let's wait upon the Lord. And let's serve for where God is giving us the service to serve. So that he can give us the ability to do it well. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way, that's verse 7, in each person for the good of all. The Spirit gives one person a message full of wisdom, while to another person the same Spirit gives a message to full of knowledge, the body of Christ. That's why we have to work together. No man is an island. Regardless whether you are anointed by God or what, you still need people to work with you because you might have um, a spirit of wisdom and the other person doesn't have or doesn't have the spirit of knowledge or the other person have wisdom and you don't have wisdom there, and you have knowledge. 
So those things, they work together. That's what they say, the body of Christ. We need one another, no matter what denomination it is, if it's from God. We need one another to embrace one another, to work one another for the things of God. One, that's verse nine now. One and the same spirit gives faith to one an another person, while to another person, he gives the power to heal. If you're in a place that they cannot allow you to do or to excel in where you are called to be or to be, but uh, I said, wait upon the Lord first. But if you're in a place when God now have, uh, uh, have polished you, and prepare you for the healing and for the um for 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 the um for the for the faith for the healing don't do it yet but if you're in a place that you are now that you're matured you can eat you can chew bones and beyond and you can do it diligently and God is now assigning you to that assignment. And you're in the place that they cannot let you uh, uh, excel, you know, calling. Then it's not a right place for you. If God have given that title already, that you, you are the healer, not the healer is Christ. You can heal people. Then do it. Or if you are in that place that they cannot give you a chance to do it, then you have to find another place so that you can excel in your gift. Not that the whole world is going to be churches, churches all over them. When you go to this corner, it's a church. You go to this corner, it's a church. You go to this corner, it's a church. And it's a church of, of, of their own benefit of the, the minister or the, the, that particular person. Church is not a business. It's not like McDonald's or Dollarama. You have to be called in order to do that. So that people, when they come, they will excel and they will grow in your ministry. And they can... Uh, where they can do the, the, the uh, do the work or the assignment what God have can uh, have called them. We can be ten pastors in the same church. There's no problem with that. As long as we do respect the senior pastor, there's no problem with that. And even as long as the, the senior pastor is is, uh, is respecting you, I was in a church. Oh, I love my pastor very well, daily. I don't want to mention her name. But I love her dearly. She have she have assistant pastors. She's sometimes give them give them the 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 flow to preach, and they will preach well. Not only when she's not around, they preach well, and they're still with her. Why? Because they love her, and they know that it's not my time for me to go and excel outside there. Some of them they've been there for twenty years. The the one that I know. The 20 years that I've been, uh, the 20 years that I know them, even when, I'm, when I go to that church, I still see them and they're still doing the same thing. They didn't grow shoulder that, oh, now I can preach or I can fly. Now I can go and fly somewhere, someplace. No, you still need this. And this person needs you too because God brought you here so that you can help. Maybe in terms of the person is not here, you don't even know when, 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 what God can do. And you'll be the, the, the next pastor of that church. You don't know. Let's be patient. Don't think that you know better than your pastor and you have to go and open your church. That's why we don't go anywhere. Cannot be the churches in each and every street. So who's going to go to the churches? That's why we go and go and get those powers for, to, to, to grab people and to put them into trouble. Because you, you are not called yet. And you cannot go and grab the powers outside there and bring it into the church. And to bring people. May God deliver us and set us apart from those in Jesus' name. Verse 10 says, the spirit gives one person the power to work miracles to another. The gift to another, the gift of speaking God's message. You see now, the other one God gives them the power to do to perform miracles, and it's the same the body of Christ, and the other one to speak God's message. 
There's the one that will perform miracles. There's one that will heal as, we, as far as we, we read. There's one that can preach God's message. It's not everyone will speak God's message. It's not everybody will heal. It's not everyone will deliver. It's not everybody will, uh, will speak. I think that one will, will, will come. Let's continue. And to yet another, the ability to tell the differences between gifts that come from the spirit and those that do not. The other one is to, to, um, to, to, to the ability to, to, to differentiate between the gifts that from the spirit and from that not the spirit. Discernment. There's people who are called to discern, to see whether that particular person or that spirit that is from God or is not. We don't focus into those things. That's why we fall into trouble. But when we focus into those things, we are able to, to, to differentiate that this is from God or this is not from God. And let's not run from the things that is not of God. God is not pleased with this. To, uh, to, one, to one person, he gives the ability to speak in strange tongues. To one person is give the ability to speak in strange tongues. It's good to speak in different tongues. But if we, we can be able to, to translate what the person is saying. I was in a place that at a certain time, we all have speaking in, in different tongues. Even those who do not speak. Even the witches, they have to speak in different tongues. And I said, wow, Lord, Jesus, what is that? And the moment when I feel my spirit that, <clears throat> This is not right because you can tell that this is not right. And when I stop, then I, I observe. And the shepherd will say, Come on, come on, let's, let, let's, let's begin to speak in tongues. Let's begin to speak in tongues. And what do those tongues are coming from? If they're not from God, you will tell that those tans, speaking in strange language or tongues is not from God. And it's not from God. You cannot even able to join them. And because you don't know what they're provoking. Some of the, those terms are not from God. And we have to make sure that those, are, those terms are from God. And if they're from God, then they, there's somebody again. Strength, uh, yeah, here. Yeah. And to another, he gives the ability to explain what he said. If he cannot, if there's nobody who can explain what had been said, then you have to run away from it. There used to be this little girl in our ministry. When we started, she was good before we noticed things. Oh, this woman, because somebody 16, above 16 or 20 or 30, is not a, a, a little girl, is a child, is a woman. So when she started, or when we started, she was good before, I think, before something happened. So she will speak, or she will speak in tongues, that the Lord will give me the ability to translate it. But in the long run, she started to do things different. Like, it's not, that was not the spirit of God. And even herself, she did not know what she said when she was speaking in tongues, I mean, in that strange, strange uh, language before she entered to the another realm. And the, when she, well, after she said whatever, and the Lord will, will, will make me or will ex explain through me, what the what the woman was saying sometimes it's been a good message for the body of christ but if i cannot be able to translate it and nobody can translate it and i go blank and i don't even know what is all i i notice that there's something wrong so the time when she was on the rock i was able to to explain it but the moment she turned to something different i couldn't be able to and it was, it, it was grieving the Holy Spirit. It was grieving like I was grieving in my spirit. And then I used to explain after, and she would feel good because she didn't know what she was saying. And I would, I, I would explain it and she felt bad, she would feel good. But the moment she, she's now into another things, I couldn't be able to, and it was grieving the Holy Spirit. And I said, no, this is not right. And she noticed that, that I, uh, now I know that she's not the one that we know. Which means, you know, like I said, 
the things that is happening in the church is terrible. You will be with people in the ministry or in the church, and you think that they, they came here to help you. They're not here to, to come and help you. They, they came here to tear you down, not to tear you up. Not knowing that this woman was sent in the ministry to tear you down. And we were not aware of that. But God made a way one day for us to see what is going on with this woman. Did she, after the, God exposed it, did she be able to remain? No, she didn't stand. She couldn't stand it. Because each and every time the Holy Spirit would rebuke it. And that time the Holy Spirit was so, was, uh, uh, not that time, the, the, that time the Holy Spirit was so in particular into that business because he knew what is going on. And each and every time the prayer will be praying against the spirit of witchcraft. And they don't like to, to confess anyhow if they're deeply into it. And the moment she was about to, to, to confess or to confess, uh, when we confess and when now God opened our eyes to see this particular woman is not the right, is not, is, she doesn't have a right spirit. That's the time when he started to threaten this and I, I want to this and that and that if you can do this or that, whatever. But like they, they give you the, 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 the conditions or they give you what you have to do. But they, they came there for the title. And those one are the ones that fight for the title. And they're not calling to. Can you imagine somebody can fight to be a preacher? And the person is into witchcraft. And what is he going to teach people? Is he not going to bring? Is he not going to bring them? Uh, bring that the people to that, whatever they, they, they believe or they put themselves into. And I used to be in that one. The other time they um, they want people to speak in tongues. Everybody have to speak in tongues, and you are forced to speak in tongues. If you don't speak in tongues, then we are not for this. I, I believe. That's what, according to what I, I, I thought it would be. And the people that they were there, they're not, not that I, I'm judging them. And those who were used to pray for, to pray for the service, uh, uh, as we know them, may God deliver all of us from this and God begin to use us differently. But it is one and the same spirit in verse 11, who does all this? One and the same spirit, who does all this? The spirit of God. He give all the spirit and he is the one that do it. As he wishes, he gives a different gift to each person. He give a, he give a different gift to each person. That's why we need one another. That's why it's the body of Christ. Because when he gives this one, let's say um, one of the one, another person is the one that can translate. And the other one can uh, can um, can speak in the strange the language, and the other one can heal. So if it's one person, or one person want to carry all the, the, the everything, so how is going to be? So which means one person want to be everything? Can this particular person be everything? No, it cannot. So if that particular person want to be everything, then he will hate the people that they come to support in that person, or maybe this this is too particular people or three or four or five, that this shepherd, I think that that the one that can can do the job or can 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 assist him, then that's wrong. Let God be the one can choose the one that he knows that is capable to do the will of God, to assist you, to work with you and work with them. One body or one body with many parts, verse 12. Christ is like a single body which has many parts. It is still one body, even though it is made up with different parts. It's the same way all of us, whether Jews or Gentiles, whether slaves or free, uh, or free have been baptized into the, body of, into the body by the same spirit, and we have all been given the one spirit to drink. We're all given the one spirit to drink. And what is that spirit? It's faith. We're all given one spirit. We're all given the same faith. The measure of faith is the same, and though it might be different for how you use it. Because you cannot use faith, or you cannot be of God or, or filled by the Holy Spirit while you drink alcohol, 
or you take cigarette and all those kind of things that will, 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 will chase away the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is holy. That's why people, they think that maybe the measure of our faith is not the same. It's equally, it's the same. Unless if you're not using it in the right way, yes, that is the way it can be. And you might think that another person has been anointed more than you. No, the same faith. Yeah, the person can be anointed than others because of the titles. Because the title that God is giving it to you, you have to anoint it to that level of that title. Amen. For the body itself is not made up of only one part, but of many parts. If the food were to say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, that will not keep it from being a part of the body. Regardless what, I might hate, let's say use that word, because that's what is happening in the church. I might hate my brother or one of my, my sister, my sisters. It's not that even if I hate them, or I will make them to run from this ministry or from this church so that they're still not the body of Christ. I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm not talking about the other things that I don't know because other things that I don't know is where the trouble is. But the body of Christ is where the, where the uh, where togetherness and unity have to be. Regardless whether the person left, but it's still one, it's still one of us. It's still one of the body of Christ, if you are one of the body, if you are not in the other body that I don't know. And if the ear were to say, because I'm not an ear, I don't belong to the body, that will not keep it from being a part of the body. It won't, it won't make sense. When God created us, he created us the ears, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So, whether maybe for wrinkles, for God forbid, my eye, I mean, one of my ear can be cut off by something or an accident or something. It's not meaning that it is it, 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 not the part of my body. It's the part of my body, unfortunately, have been removed or cut off. But it's still part of my body. And I know myself that I have an, an ear. Unfortunately, it went, it cut off by, by whenever I'm involved in an accident, for God forbid. That's the reason, but I'm still belong, or it still belong here. It still belong in my body. It still belong the body of Christ. And if it were only an ear, not could could it smell? And it is, however, God put everything different part in the body just as He wanted it to be. I think I elaborated this more than before when I started. It's how God wanted it to be. He cannot change that, and we cannot change it. Unless if you want the fake nose, and we can put a plastic. That's your choice. It's not what God wants. That's what, what God is saying. It's, that's um, God wanted it to be. There will not be a body if it were all only one part. There won't be a body if it was all only one part. Let's say, for example, my nose just is just a nose. Just a nose. Nobody know nothing. Just a nose. What are we going to think? It's the scary part, isn't it? It's scary. And as it is made to smell, then what is going to smell to help what? Maybe the, um, maybe the teeth. The teeth is too grand. But if this, there was no lips or mouth, the food will be outside and the teeth will be outside. And the tongue, they work together. Because after I swallow, I mean, after I grind, I swallow. And the tongue and the tonsils, that's what will help me to swallow. Then the ears, they do help for me to hear. That's what's going on around me. Even when I cross the street and cross the road, my ears will help me to hear that now I can cross and my eyes here it helped me to see that now the, the car uh, the, the is clear and the ears is listening for me to hear that there's a car that is coming but far far away. I can cross because I can see. My eyes help me to see that it's clear. I can cross. That's how the body part of the, the body part works. 
So then the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, nor can the head say to the feet, well, I don't need you. None of them can say that. If you don't need one of the body parts, then you are not in the right track as a shepherd. We all need one another. We all have made to support one another. That's why God gives us a different gift. I cannot be called a, a shepherd and want to fight the bishop that I want to be bishop because I think I can do better than him. No, I'm not called to do that. I'm not called to be that. I'm called to be a shepherd. And I, I have to make sure that I'm working hard to, for my assignment to do it well and ask God to help me to do it well, not to be given something here uh, as a shepherd. And I want to fight somebody there as a bishop and fight him for his calling, what he's called to do. That would be wrong. Or maybe um, Sister Nicole is called to be, or Nikki is called to be assistant pastor. And Sister Rosie is called to be a praise and worship, or, or a, a praise and worship. Then as a praise and worship uh, team, I just take her, and because I like her, and put her where Sister Nicole is supposed to be, or Nikki supposed to be, and take Sister Nikki and put her someplace, maybe to be an usher. And she's called to be an assistant pastor, or she's called to be a pastor. Or just because maybe I'm not even called to be a, a shepherd or a pastor. I just doesn't want her to become who she is. Because if she become to who is she is, then I won't have that title. That I'd rather keep her busy with something that she's not called to. That's to totally wrong. If I replace her with somebody that is, is not supposed to be here, then I'm not doing wrong, right in the body of Christ. And again, I'm not the one that can place people. It's God who places people. He said he exalt one another and he can put one another and exalt one another according to what we do or according to the relationship that we have and the obedience as well. On the contrary, we cannot do without the part of the body that seems to be weaker. There's a pastor that I mentioned is that he can, he, we can give somebody a title and if that person is still weak and young, the person cannot do the, the, that, cannot carry that title well. Maybe you want to give the, the, that person a cross. That's why some, some, some other people, they take the cross upside down. Why? They are not entitled they don't know that they have to put it this way or that the other way because they they're not matured yet i'm sorry they're not matured yet yet and it's not god who who exalt them to be that if it's god god will help them to do it well and maintain it well And those parts that, the, that we think aren't worth very much are the ones which we treat with greater care. Those ones, the ones that we think that they are, not, um, they are not worth very much. Because we're all looking for somebody who we think that they, they, they're worth much. And when they come to the ministry, they're going to support the ministry with finance or whatever. Or maybe the person who knows their background that they have business or whatever, when they come to the ministry, they will, they will bless the ministry and stuff like that. And we give them the title, that's wrong. We cannot give the title for what we see that the person can help the ministry. They can still come and help the ministry. Then they don't have to have the title if God did not give them the title. Just wait upon the Lord. And don't, don't take the, the, the one that is weak that the, the, the one that is less privileged, that they cannot support you, and you think that they're not worth it. They're worth it. Some of them have been more anointed even than the shepherd. It's for you to, 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 uh, to boost them. It's for you to sharpen them so that they can reach that goal, what the Lord has given them. Because the things that we pass through in the world can tear you down including you and including me as a shepherd 
or whatever you, you call yourself, or we call ourselves. We need a, a, an, an eye, I mean, a, an eye on to sharpen us. You cannot do it by yourself. And you cannot look down on them. The homeless, some of them, if you see them, them, they were wealthy before. They know exactly what it's all about. And don't mistreat them. They're God's creation. And God loves them. And he can take them outside there and, and put you down and elevate that one. The one that you think that you, 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 you cannot even look at that person. We think that even they're stinky. May God help us. May God help us. While the parts of the body which don't look very nice are treated with special modesty. Hmm. The, the, the one that we think that they are very nice, that the one that we want to treat them well, the one that we think that they're bringing tithe or offering in the church, that the one that we think that they, they have to, to, we have to treat them well, or modesty, that's totally wrong. If, in fact, we shouldn't have treated the other one differently. We have to treat one another the same. We are brothers and sisters. May those titles, God, demolish them. And may we begin to call one another brothers and sisters, regardless what. Which the most beautiful parts do not need. God himself has put the body together in such a way as to give greater honor to, this, to those parts that need it. God give all the honor, great honor even, what the Bible says, great honor to each and every one of them. And so there is no division in the body, but all its different parts have the same concern for one another. May we be concerned to one another. May we love one another so that we can do the things of God together. May we be the body of Christ. If one part of the body suffers, all the other parts suffer with it. If one part is praise, all the other parts say is happiness. I think I mentioned this, that when the, the spirit of jealousy is another trouble to us. So when we praise and somebody is celebrating, let's celebrate together. When the other one is suffering, like maybe my, my, when my, 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 um, I'm having a headache, my eye will, will be reflected too. If you meet with me, then you'll say, wow, what the, you, don't look, um, you don't look well. Why? Because you've seen it from my eyes, because they're the same body parts. So if the other one is, in, is suffering or is in pain, then the whole body will be in pain. And if we can be like that as the body parts, and if I'm suffering, you feel the, shame, you feel the pain. And if I'm rejoicing, you'll rejoice with him you will just with me, then we'll be happy together. And the, even the Bible says, um, when somebody is celebrating, celebrate with them and know that yours is still coming. If not, it's not yet here, then you have to pray a little bit harder so that it can soon come and God will open the doors. Even if it's not coming then, still celebrate with others because you know that yours is coming. For us women, when the other one is getting married, we get so bitter. We get so jealous. We wish it could be us. Did you know how that woman works so to get into that, or to get that man, or to convince that man to marry her? Do you know what type of prayer that she, she prayed? You were there? Do you know what type of fasting the woman fasted? Maybe she fasted for so very long time. And you become jealous of them. Work on your own, and God will do the rest and be happy with that particular person. Or another woman, if he's pregnant, be happy with them. It's not a crime to buy a present to that baby or the, the time of the baby shower, buy something. It's not a crime to, to buy a present for that bride. Women, we have bridal shower. Even men, they have it. I don't know what they call it. Buy a present to your brother because they're celebrating that time. And the time when it's yours, then they will do the same maybe even more than what you did. That's how it should be. Not to be jealous and bitter and want to kill that particular person. And we plan even evil that in the time of that, that marriage and that celebration, I'm going to make sure that by the time when I'm going there, I'm, 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 I'm out with the, the wicked stuff. And when I hug her, 
they will be fighting the very same night that they get married and they will divorce the next day. That's totally wrong. It's wicked, evil. May God set us free from that in Jesus' name. All of you are Christ's body and each one is a part of it. In the church, God has put all in place. In the church, God has put all in the place, but we, we turn things around. What God has put in place, we want to put it in, in our own way. That's why we're all in trouble. And you can even, uh, as a shepherd, maybe I, I just like you. And I can call you something, something. Because I, I just like you. And you are not being called for that. Just because I just like you. I give you a title, which you're not entitled to. And you know yourself, even when the, one, the, 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 recipient, the recipient, you know that this is not what you call to be. We all know, unless it is not clear yet. But you can still ask God to, to tell you or to show to you what is your assignment so that you can work on it. We all know. And just because you like the title, then you will take it. But it's not what you call for. And you will fall with it. May God disgrace all of us in Jesus' name. In the first place, apostles in the second place. Prophets. Apostle in the first place, and now is the body of Christ in the church. Apostles, and the second place is the prophets, and the third place is teachers. Then the, those who perform miracles, followed by those who are given the power to heal or to help others or to direct them or to speak in strange languages. I mentioned that the, the, we can, we can uh, differentiate the pastors and the brothers and sisters when i mentioned that the time when uh, when things are when i when god opened my eyes i knew that we are brothers and sisters but things have changed we all fight too for the title sometimes you can fight for the same title and you are not called for it so god says here that there's those one the apostle is the first one and you don't have to go and carry it for yourself let wait god to give you that title and there's the, um, the prophets. You don't have to be those and, uh, uh, and, and try to fight or to go and grab it anyhow. And the teachers and the others, those who speak in different tongues, not that there's the others that they, don't, they have not mentioned here, they're not value. We all value is the same, we still the same, the body of Christ. And those who perform miracles and speak in strange tongues, and when those ones are valued, if the pastor cannot even speak in, in strange tongues, then if somebody else do, then we have to respect that person as well, because he's helping, because that's what God wants in the body of Christ. They are not all apostles hmm, or prophets or teachers. They are not all. We cannot be all apostles, and we cannot be all prophets or teachers. It will be wrong. So who will be teaching to? Who will be prophesying to? If we all be prophets and apostles and all those kinds. So who will be teaching to? And who will be prophesying to? That's completely wrong. Not everyone has the power to work miracles or to heal the disease or to speak in strange chants or to explain what he said. Not everybody. If it's everybody, then we don't need one another. But if we need one another, then it's not going to be everybody. We all call in a different assignment. We all call in a different ways. May God grant us that in Jesus' name. Set your hearts then on the more important gifts. Set your heart in the more important gifts. The important one, not in those one. The worldly one that will fall us, uh, will cause us trouble, and we find ourselves uh, fall in disgrace. Not this one. Best of all, however, is the following way. Is the following way. Best of all, however, is the following way. Is God now said the best of all? Is the following way. My God, uh, change us. And may God give us the spirit of wisdom. And it's my prayer that if we don't have wisdom, 
that we pray is freely given, that God will give us wisdom and we do his will diligently without any trouble. He said, ask for wisdom. I will give it to you. Solomon did not ask for anything. He said, Father, he knew that the title that he was given now as a king, and he knew, I believe that he knew when he seen what the father was passing through. It's not a, an easy title. And to be a king is not an easy thing. And he knew that if I cannot ask God to, to be with me in this case, I might fall and it will be a disgrace. I rather involve God in this. And his father David told him or advised him that don't make mistake. Follow God, you will do it well. And when he prayed, he said, Father, if you can just give me wisdom so that I can be able to lead your people, that's what I need in this case. It's the same, same plus one. If we can ask God to give us wisdom to be able to handle our assignment or the shepherd, to be able to take care of the flocks and to focus only in God, to lead us and to guide us, we'll be in the right track. And not to give any how, any how titles into the into the into the, the flocks. We are killing them. We are not doing any good to them. Unless if it's not of God. Then if it's not of God, then I don't have to say in that. God is the one that will take care of the things. But my mission or my mess my my, my my assignment of delivering the message is to say God is not pleased with the wrong title that we carry. He does not know them. And it will be a disgrace when he disgraces you. On if he's not pleased with you, it's not going to be a good thing. Let's wait upon the Lord. He will renew our strength. And he will give us the gift or the titles that he know that we are entitled to. Let's not run ahead of God. Let's wait upon the Lord so that he can do what he says he can do. We cannot even force him to give us that title because in the moment or the situation or the, in this, uh, this generation or this century is the century of power or the century of competition, then I have to rush God to give me what I'm not entitled to when it's not even the time and when, it's, when, when I'm not matured yet. May God be with us and may God set us free and may God give us patience so that we can be patiently waiting. Right now we are waiting for Christ to come. Do we know when he's coming? We still wait and they haven't said it for a long, 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 long by the time up to this time, we're still waiting. But we can see that things are crumbling and this, the world is not the same how we, how we grew up or my, my, my time. When I grew up, the world was not like this. Everything was peace. And if somebody killed one, killed somebody in my country, it would be like the whole year top of the news. Like the whole country, they will be, uh, they, will, they will be in sorrow. Because it, 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 it's not normal for somebody to kill one another. So if that case happened, or now the things that we see right now, it's happening now, let's know that Christ is near to come. Will we be ready? Will we be ready? Or to take us home? Will we be ready? Will we be ready? Or not? This is the time to prepare ourselves and to work hard and to pray hard and to develop a good relationship with God so that we at least will make it to heaven with our Lord Jesus Christ as well. 
because he's the one that paid the price for us with that shed blood and the cross of Calvary. May God change us. May God set us apart from this world. The world have of everything, you name it, but you cannot have it all. You have to have something that you will nourish, at least the relationship with Christ, at least to acknowledge him as, as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. I am not going to um I'm not going to pray a sinner's prayer today, but in your heart you will you will pray it and you say, Father, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you, forgive me, and I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. As from this day forth, may you be the Lord in my life. May you be with me and may your Holy Spirit guide me and protect me as you said i will do it well next time not in a rush in jesus name amen 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 it is well let's pray a little bit and close the um and close the prayer by um i mean the, the service by prayer in fact um let's read psalm 20, uh, 23 is our assignment psalm 23 let it be our assignment for, for us today. And then in that what will lead us to, to pray the sinner's prayer um, more than diligently. That was the prayer of David. The Lord, our shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in fields of green grass and leads me to quiet pools of fresh water. He gives me new strength. He guides me in the right path as he has promised. Even if, even if I go through the deepest darkness, I will not be afraid, Lord for you are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff protect me. You prepare a banquet for me where all my enemies can see me. You welcome me as an honored guest and fill my cup to the brim. I know that your goodness and love will be with me all my life. And your house, which we, we might think that it should be the church, your house will be my home as long as I live in Jesus' name. Amen. That's the assignment and that's what you can um, you can we can add into the the sinners prayer as they call it the sinners prayer because we are all sinners in Jesus name. Let's pray a little bit. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for what you have done, O oh Lord Jehovah, and I honor you, Jehovah, King of glory, for your goodness and your mercy upon us, O oh Lord Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for what you have said to us, O oh Lord. May you speak to our spirit and may you speak to our being. May you speak to our body, O oh Lord Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. May you speak to our hearts, O oh Lord Jehovah. May you change us, O oh Father, and may you help us, O oh Father, to work with it, O oh Lord Jehovah, in Jesus' name. And may you deliver us, O oh Father, from the things that it shouldn't be, O oh Lord Jehovah, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the to him, God. Holy Spirit, we bless your name. We glorify your name, O oh Lord. As we're going to begin the new week, Father, we ask you, Lord, to be with us and to guide us, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. May you protect us, King of glory. Wherever we go, may the travel message be our portion, O oh Lord, Jehovah, in Jesus' name. Cover us, O oh Father, and, and heal us, O oh Father. Heal your land, O oh Father. Your land is in turmoil because of corona. Father, may, 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 you, may you have mercy again to us, oh Father. May you give a second chance, oh Father, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. May, may this sickness, oh Father, whatever it is, oh break, my Lord. Father, may you work with us, oh Father. Have compassion on, on us, oh Lord. Have mercy upon us, Lord Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my Savior, may anyone in this platform and anyone that is sick that will be listening to the sound of my voice, Father, may you heal them, Jehovah. May you heal them, King of Glory. May you touch them, Father, with your healing, with your healing touch, O oh Lord Jehovah, in Jesus' name. May all those sickness and, 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 and disease, may they disappear in the name of Jesus. Some of them, Father, they're in the hospital bed right now as I speak, O oh Lord. Some of them is a heart attack or corona or any kind of sickness, a stroke or 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 or, or or the arthritis or all those kind of father. But my God, you are more than the arthritis. You are more than cancer. You are more than heart attack. You are more than stroke, King of glory. You are more than any disease or any plague in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the true living God. Some of them that are looking, oh, Father, for the fruit of the womb. You are more than barrenness, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. And I say, Father, bless your people, Jehovah, in Jesus' name. Some of them, they're still looking for a spouse to marry. Lord Jehovah, you are more than 
you are more than a bachelor. May you give them that spouse, oh Lord Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. Some of them that are looking for financial breakthrough. Father, you are more than poverty, Jehovah, in Jesus' name. Bless them, oh Lord Jehovah, in Jesus' name. Some of them that are looking for jobs, oh Lord. Jehovah, do, do, do what you, you only do. Bless them, Father, with the job, my Lord Jehovah, in Jesus' mighty name. Some of them, oh Lord Jehovah, they the the they are looking for a stable relationship my lord you are in the throne of grace all those is in your hand father open the door some of them that are in preparation of, of buying their own home and their own new car or lord or anything jehovah you are the provider provide for them some of them that have just been looking for a food to eat today and i say father may you bless them father may you provide for them as you are jehovah jaira my lord some of them father they, are, they, they they have not eaten for so long not that they are fasting because they they, they don't have it and i said father you still the provider you provided manna from the manna for the children of the israelites when they were when they were from egypt oh lord jehovah in jesus name provide for them king glory in the name of jesus the homeless of oh, father it's not that they wanted to be or they they, they or they, that's what they're entitled to my god and my savior i ask you father to bless them jehovah bless them no matter what condition, bless them, Father, with the blessing that they will forget that, to, that yesterday and they will remember what happened to them now and how to handle it tomorrow in Jesus' mighty name. Spirit of the true living God, I know you are in the throne of grace, my Father. I know there's nothing that you cannot do, Adonai. Have your way, O oh Lord, al Sadai. Bless them into your holy name, my God. Provide for them, O oh Lord, the widows, O oh Lord, the homeless, King of glory, the orphans, O oh Lord, the less privileged, my Lord, Father, I know I passed through those, and I know that, Father, if you take me out from it, that will be one of the testimony one day. If you took me out of it, Lord Jehovah, you will take it out, you will take somebody out of it in Jesus' name. Jehovah, I thank you. Jehovah, I honor you. Jehovah, I bless your name, your glory. May your will be done, O oh Lord, in thy lives, O oh Lord. May whatever the Bible says, whatever we ask, it shall be given to us. Lord Jehovah, may, as I ask for on their behalf, Father, let it be given to them in Jesus' mighty name. May you open the doors for them, my Lord. May the double doors that have been closed so tightly, Father, let they be opened by your power. The Bible says, when, God's, when, when Jesus opened the doors, no man can close it. And they say, son, that when God opened that door, no man can, can, can close it. And when he closes it, know that he has another better door for you, and no one can open it or close it in Jesus' name. Father, you are still the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Do it for your children, Jehovah, in Jesus' name. Father, have your way, O oh Lord, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. I cancel spirit of premature death. I cancel spirit of death. I cancel spirit of, of, of death and hell. I cancel every spirit that is, will try to torment them in Jesus' mighty name. Lord Jehovah, have your way, O oh Lord, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. May you favor them, or may you favor us, O oh Lord. Or may we find favor with you and favor with men, O oh Lord, or favor with other men, O oh Lord Jehovah, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Holy Living God. Father, any spirit of frustration that will try to frustrate us and go and do the wrong thing. We are not going to do the, anything that is wrong. We will try, my Lord and our Savior, to, for, oh, and pray for you to help us to do the right thing all the time. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, let the will be done. Any grip, let the fire of God deal with it in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Holy God. Father, have your way. May you set your people free. May you deliver your children, Jehovah. May you do only what you can do, Jehovah, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. We honor you. We bless your name. May you love us, O oh Father, and help us to love you more, O oh Lord Jehovah, in Jesus' name. May the blessings of our Lord Jesus Christ be upon us, O oh Lord Jehovah, in Jesus' name. May the blessing that was upon Abraham, Father, is our forefather, be upon us. In Jesus' name. May whatever we touch be a blessing, O oh Lord Jehovah, in Jesus' name. We thank you, we honor you, and we bless your precious holy name. May our prayers and our, our sharing your message may be covered with the precious blood of Jesus. May our platform be covered with the precious blood of Jesus as well, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, have your way. Intercede, O oh Lord Jesus, and intervene, my Lord and my savior in jesus name we depend on you and our hope is in you your glory in jesus name and your disciples uh, ask you teacher john used to, john john taught his disciples how to pray 
And when are you going to, to teach us how to pray? You didn't say tomorrow or when. He said, let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as you forgive those who trespass against us, and deliver us from all evil, for that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever in Jesus' mighty name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to be with us all. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And shalom of God in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.